Alrighty, Card King of M, Kenji, back for some more drafting here on Magic the Gathering Online. We have a Mardu Cube lined up this time. So, as you can see in this pack here, nothing but red, white, and black cards. So, none of my two favorite colors. No green, no blue this time. Um, which means there are going to be a lot of aggressive decks. Uh, I think for the most part, they outline aggressive strategies in this format. But there are some more control elements, of course. You know, there are a lot of removal spells in these colors as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll jump right in. I'm probably going to lean towards doing an aggro deck of some type, but we'll see. Um, yeah, as with all cubes, you're going to see a lot of powerful cards. You're trying to build like a archetype and not just good cards. I might go with like pick one, pack one, lightning bolt, though. It doesn't seem like a bad start, no matter which way I end up going. Just a solid all-around card, and again, I don't really know what is in this set uh, besides, you know, nothing but red, white, and blue. So, or red, white, and black, rather. So let's first pick the bolt and see what we can do from there. What is this card? Hurl through hell. Exile all creature into cast it. Wow. That card is very good. What the heck? I assume this is from some commander set, but I, I guess I can right-click. What is it from? Adventures in the Forgotten Realm Commander. Yeah, geez, that card is very powerful. Um, what else do we have here? Some lands are probably good choices. But, man, that card just seems way too good to pass up. That is one hell of a red-black card. As we probably just want to take, like, a Smuggler's Copter here or, like, the Palace Jailer. Two really, really good cards. I think I'm going to lean towards the Copter here. I don't even know what this one is. Armix, Filigree, Thrasher, 3 mana, 3 2, attacks, discard a card, and you turn. Well, that's a pretty good removal spell. Oh, wait. Number of artifacts. So that's an artifact theme card. Yeah, we'll just take the Smuggler's Copter here. Any card that's been banned, you know, is probably a pretty strong one. Let's do that. Into a. Oh, a Double Vision's kind of fun. Uh, what is Xerzoth? Chaos Rider. 2 3 for 3. Whenever an opponent draws their first card each turn, if it's not their turn, you create a 1 1 with. When it dies, ping. Whenever one or more devils you control attacks, one or more players, you and those players each draw a card, then discard a card at random. Strange. Okay. Um, hell, I wonder if just forcing a mono-colored deck to start off in this format is actually, is actually the better strategy if you don't know what you're doing. Like, maybe take the Noblest of War and just go, like, mono red super aggro could be a thing. I might try that. Even though this Hurl Through Hell card seems stupid good. And maybe even worth splashing, since there's only three colors. And I'm sure there's a bunch of fixing in the format, but a lot of the times in these more straightforward cubes, I like forcing <clears throat> an aggressive deck to start things off. Because um, then you get to play through the format and get a better idea of, you know, what may or may not be good. So I think I'm going to do that. Let's, let's force mono red and see if we can uh, just smash some people down. All right, next pack coming along here. Uh, the Fire Flux Squad. Four mana, four, three haste. Whenever it attacks, you may exile another target attacking creature you control. If you do real cards on the top of your library and you reveal a creature card, put that card on the battlefield, tap it, attacking the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Well, that seems very good. Passing a Smashing here could be great. Draconic Roar seems decent. What is this? Gen Arcanum Weaver. So a lot of the uh, commander cards in this format, but this squad looks really good, especially if we can get some token producers. And this only ever hits creature cards. So yeah, you can imagine like attacking with the Fire Flux and a token, turning the token into a Noblest of War. That's pretty nice. Okay, next pick. We got some good ones. Love a good Violent Interruption, or rather Violent Eruption. If you ever played back in the Madness days, you know, you have your Wild Mongrels and your Violent Eruptions. This is kind of nice. Uh, I guess I'm going to just go with the Magda here. Passing a Maul of the Skyclave. I mean, probably supposed to take Maul of the Skyclaves, but again, I'm kind of forcing Mono Red and want to see if this works out. So let's do that. Um, we have the combo anyways already. Magda plus the Smuggler's Copter to crew and, you know, make a treasure without putting Magda in the range of uh, the line of fire of combat. Seems good. Ooh, into a Koth of the Hammer. Okay, rewarded. Love that one here. 
Yeah, if we're going mono red, what's going to be better than a Koth? I can't imagine much. Collect the Defiance, also great. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, lock it in. Let's go. And what is this? Pick seven. So, hadn't seen any of these yet. There's an Anya, Maid of Dishonor, Scrap Heap Scrounger. Probably just taking a braid here for us, though. I guess the Scrounger is probably pretty good as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can find a. Well, actually, there's a bunch of artifacts in this, too, isn't there? Maybe a braid's better than taking the two drop three, two. Let's do that. I hope there's like a Rabble Master or something that we can... Actually, you know what? There's probably Rabble Master and... Uh, what's that other one? The Goblin... Le or Legion War Boss. How many other Goblins at three mana have that type of ability? Let's get those ones. The Token Producers. All right, here's our wheel pack where... Sadly, we did not get anything for Mono Red. Uh, I guess... Maybe if we're ending up in red-white. I don't know. I, I want to try to be mono-red if possible, so we'll just ignore that. The Glinthorn Buccaneer. Uh, whenever you discard a card, deals one damage to your opponent. Okay, it's fine. Ogrehead Helm, of course, from Kamigawa. Intervention, not a bad uh, modal card. Eh, kind of like taking the Ogrehead Helm here. Hammer of Perforos. I always, I see this card and think it's really, really good, but oftentimes it's not as good as you want it to be, but we'll probably end up playing it. Rabbit Battery here, probably better than the Force of Rage, I would think. Like, creatures you control have haste, that's clearly nice, and you can sack land and make a 3-3 with haste, but it's just really expensive is the issue. I don't know, might still be worth it. I guess this is a way to make tokens for like the Fireflux squad, if nothing else. Let's see, we have Bolt and a Braid right now for some removal. Kalia in this too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put that to the side for now, but maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, there's pack one of this Mardu cube. Forcing mono red, and I imagine you're gonna you're gonna run into a lot of people doing mono color decks, of course. As wow, damn, some very good cards here. Kalitas, the Trader of Get, Shouldred Bishop. What is this thing? Cursed Mirror, three mana, add a red. As it enters the battlefield, you may have it become a copy of any creature on the battlefield until end of turn, except it has haste. Oh, weird. So it's a it's a clone with haste on the turn you cast it. And then it just turns into like a rock. Uh, probably not good enough. We have a Dragon Rage Channeler here for us and a Hell Rider. I guess Hell Rider is another decent top end card, but man, Dragon Rage Channeler is so, so good at one mana. I'd rather feel like we want the cheap spells here than the more expensive ones. So let's take the Channeler. And get past a bunch of good cards. Wow, wow, wow. Let's see. Ashen War Liege is a 4-1 for 4 that pumps all my other creatures. And then if it becomes the target of a spell or ability opponent controls, they lose 4 life. That's decent. Got a Firebolt here. Classic good one. Twin Shot Sniper could be all right. Don't think we want Seize the Spoils. Yeah, I kind of like taking the Firebolt here over the Ashen War Liege. Feels like this card is more likely to wheel. And af especially after taking the Channeler. Kind of want to just pick up some more cheap interaction, non-creature style. Uh, what is this? Ruin Grinder. Six mana, seven, four menace. When it dies, each player may discard their hand and draw seven cards. And it has Mountain Cycling. Probably not what we want. We've got a Tago Goblin Weaponsmith here. This guy makes rocks, right? I remember this one. Yeah, whenever a land enters the battlefield in your control, create a colorless equipment artifact token named Rock with equipped creature has one tap, sacrifice deals two damage to any target, and equip one. So not bad, actually. Uh, I might just want to take a Crow in War here. I remember that card being great. But this could be fine. I'll go ahead and just take the, the Crow in War, though. 
Terror of the Twin Peaks looks pretty good, or whatever, Terror of the Peaks. Uh, Canyon could never be bad here. Judgment is all right. Circuit Mender, eh, probably not Circuit Mender. I don't know if this Terror of the Peaks is actually going to be all that good in our deck. But I guess I'll take it here over the Sunbaked Canyon. Seems all right. That's probably the last top end card we want. We want to just fill out our bottom curve now. Ooh, as we get a Rakdos Cackler, Kranko's Command. There's a Murderous Red Cap here, but yeah, we'll take, I think, the one drop. Although, actually, the Kranko's Command, really, really good with the Fireflux Squad. Isn't it? Yeah. Maybe that's better. It's also better for Dragon Rage Channeler. Okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's take the Token Producer. Not bad looking here. But like I said, I have no idea how this format plays out. This maybe mono red aggro is actually just not very good. Oh, Ilharg. Ilharg with Emrakul. <laughs> uh, dang it. Nothing here for us, though. I'm not playing the Ilharg. We're not playing the Emrakul. I have a feeling forcing mono colored is probably just wrong. Oh, well, we'll take the Fable Passage. Siege Gang Commander. What is this one? Jury Master of the Review. Whenever you sack a permanent, put a 1-1 counter. Why not? Oh! Yeah, I mean, there does appear to be a really good sacrifice theme going on in the format as well. So maybe that's something that we can try later on. Oh, I guess we'll take the Siege Gang, even though we don't really want another 5-drop. Hey, Goblin Bombardment's a nice one too, though. That gives you some reach, for sure. And actually pretty darn good with the Siege Gang that I just picked up. It's also a sacrifice outlet for the Akroan War, notably. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, okay, I dig it. So what's the dream curve out here? Dream is like turn two bombardment. Sorry, turn two Kranko's command. No, turn one uh, channeler, turn two Kranko's, turn three bombardment, turn four fire flux, attack, sack one of the uh, Kranko's commands token, hit like terror of the peaks or noblest of the war. <laughs> uh. Okay, some wheels here. I got that cursed mirror back, I guess. We might actually run this given that I've taken couple of top end cards and this is a it doesn't even just have to copy your creatures it can copy any creature so eh, this could be worth running why not I wonder how many good like oh that we did wield the ashen more liege I wonder how many good uh, utility lands are in this format we've passed some of them already but Hopefully we can pick up some more later on. I don't know. This is, this feels like too many four drops and five drops for me if I'm going mono red aggro, you know? Like maybe a Crow and War is more of a sideboard card. I don't think Terror of the Peaks needs to be played. Uh, I guess randomly take the retreat. But yeah, like I said, I think we want to just keep the curve super low and efficient. That Sunbaked Canyon is probably my biggest regret. The uh, land that sacrifices to draw a card. Help mitigating flood in, in... Or not even just help mitigating flood, but... Lands that can eventually draw you cards when you don't need them in this style of deck are so nice. Good old Battle Sphere. There is a reanimator theme in this format as well. We've passed a bunch of reanimate already, like that uh, left, or wait, late for dinner and some other stuff as well. I can just imagine we're going to be trying to like burn people out with small little creatures, and somebody's going to reanimate Archon of Cruelty on me on turn three or something, and just like, okay, good game. <laughs> All right, there's pack two. Let's see if pack three can finish off the goodies. More burn and more good cheap creatures. That's the plan here. We got the bolt and the other bolt and an abrade. Let's get some like chars or something. Incinerates. Chain lightning maybe. 
I don't even know if that's in here. Fury? Oh, how about a Rampaging Ferocidon? That looks better for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a three drop we will definitely take. Mm, yeah, maybe we can wheel like the Yearling or something, but that's basically the only true card we want out of that pack. Okay, into the second pick. Ooh, we got some good four drops. The Chandra, the Atsushi, the Blazing Sky. Outburst looks pretty good. Gorger is just a one-mana play is great. I mean, <laughs> sort of Sinew and Steel giving protection from two of the three colors in this format. Seems like it's uh, probably pretty good, too. Uh... I don't know. It's hard to beat Chandra, though. The card's really nice. Yeah, I think the power level of Chandra is just too great. Ooh, a Vortex. Very good. Yeah, take some sort of Vortex here and try to wield a Mistress Factory. Oh, the, the white and black sword now, too. I wonder if this uh, Ashen War Liege is actually even worth it in our deck. Because we don't have that many creatures. I mean, we have a couple of token producers, but... I don't know if that's quite good enough, honestly. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, next pack, we have, ooh, a Heart of Kirin, perhaps. Oh, no, the approach of the second sun. Boo, that would have been a fun one to build around first pick. Uh, Yeah, I think two mana, four, four, Flying Vigilance seems pretty good. What does this one do again? Oh, it takes a while to get up to Dragon Range there. Delina makes a copy. Yeah, the die rolling one. <laughs> I bet you Embrace Shieldbreaker is really good in this format, too, but let's go with the Heart. I have two Planeswalkers as well to help crew that. Seems nice. How about a Flame Skull? 3-1 Flying, can't block. When it dies, exile it. If you do, exile the top card of your library until the end of next turn. You play one of those cards. Not bad. The Blade Historian's obviously great. Giving my attacking creatures double strike, but I th think this is what we want. Flame Skull, yes. Blade Historian, no. Yeah, let's do that. Keep the curve cheap. Ooh, Queen Marchesa. We've seen quite a few different uh, Monarch cards. I guess we'll just take this 5-3 Trample Haste Vehicle. Or maybe Cavalier of Flame is another top-end card. Seems it. Sure. This is almost like Big Red. I still feel like I'm drafting too many top end cards. Like normally I would I would want like one five drop tops if this was like a vintage cube and we were playing red, you know. But maybe this is just a slower format, I'm not sure. Again, this is my first go at the Mardu cube, so maybe this is actually just fine. Oh, baby, as we got a Torbran for our mono red deck. That's what I'm talking about now. Yeah, let's go. That seems like a nice one. Sheesh, yeah. I mean, we're probably just going to be running 17 lands in this mono red deck. So maybe we could even get the, uh, the Liege or the Terror of the Peaks back in. But Ugh, you know what? We just didn't get much burn here, did we? Our burn spells are these? I mean, I guess Chandra can pseudo burn. That's a good pack. Five mana. No, I don't think we want that one. Outpost Siege seems like a lot of value, but I bet you we probably just want to take the Muta Vault. Yeah, let's do that. I'm not concerned. I'm pretty sure we're going to end up with enough playables. So having a land... Utility land seems nice. All right, this is the pack that we opened. Nothing here for us. Hopefully we get that 
uh, factory back, and then like one more playable. Oh, you know what? I guess the oh, that's good enough. One drop's great. I guess the uh, the mute vault's actually really awkward with Noblesse of War, but that's the one card it would be bad with. So I think that's fine. And the Heb now. Uh, the Heb's pretty good too. You know what? I'm gonna cut the Siege Gang Commander. Sheesh. More four drops than three drops in my mono red deck is crazy. No reason to run Fabled Passage since we're not splashing. Deck thinning is negligible, and in fact, having the land potentially enter tapped is a huge downside. Yeah, I don't know if this deck is actually good, but hey, it's mono red. Triskaidekaphobia. <laughs> uh, there is um, the weird deck in this format where you're going to, like, there's Boros Reckoner, I believe. We saw Spite Mare. We saw Stuffy Doll. We saw Star of Extinction. There's probably Blasphemous Act, I would guess. So there is some weird deck where you're trying to, like, um, kill your opponent with your... Oh, we saw the True Fire Paladin, too. Yeah. There's probably some weird red-white deal damage to my own creature deck in this format. It looks like a fun one, too. Uh, okay, let's add 16 mountains. And see if Mono Red can make people dead. Here for the Mardu cube. Let's go. And here we are for round one of the Mardu cube with our Mono Red. <laughs> 17 lands, only one in our hand. We're so close to a keep, though. My god. One more land, and this would be great with, like, the copter and whatnot. But I'm going to have to go down to sixer here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's nowhere as good as our first hand if it had one more land. But this is good enough to keep. Ameria, turn one. Okay. We go with a turn two Magda. Copying a legendary creature doesn't seem very good. Ah, opponent with a pat. Ooh, we're going to get to uh, Naheb here on turn three. That seems nice. Oh, yeah. Turn two Magda, turn three Naheb on the play. Oh, there goes Banishing Light for my Naheb. Sure. Womp womp. All right, let's start the uh, vortex going. Mono white versus mono red here. And they missed a land. Hmm. Well, bad news for me is we're flooding out a little bit. Uh, is there a reason I should be holding lands to, like, rummage away? I can't actually remember. Maybe next time I start holding onto lands. Okay, well, I guess they had nothing. You know what I just realized? It could be worth it to uh, hold, or not hold, but uh, have the dragon in the deck as a target for Magda. I mean, I know that's really, really low likelihood, uh, I guess this is my only way to... Never mind, that's probably not worth it ever. Don't listen to me, I'm crazy. I think these are just better anyways. And worst case scenario, we can always just get Copter or Heart of Kirin, so... Alright, well, run it back. We don't really have much of a sideboard except for a Crow and War, and we didn't get much of an idea of the opponent's deck anyway, so... GG go next. Okay, if game two here of the first round... On the draw with a hand that looks pretty reasonable. Oh, that's what it was. They were missing a second color. All right. Let's go ahead and lead off with uh, battery for the initial damage since we're not really going to cast any non-creature spells very quickly. Agonizing remorse. How rude of you. They might just take Magda again. <laughs> yeah, 
they could take Vortex too. I don't know. We'll see. They did, in fact, take the Magda. All right. Um, so now let's go Channeler, Equip, and Swing in for two. And the next turn when we play the Vortex, we uh, also get to do the Surveil nonsense. Yep, keeping a land on top seems fine. What was that? Oh, Anguished Unmaking. Well, the bright side is they're paying a lot of... Like, they've already lost four life themselves. Ah, Kalitas. Yeah, that's a problem card. Hmm. Well, now if they kill any of my creatures, we're basically just going to lose, right? They get a 2-2. Two -two. Ugh. We'll go ahead and let them hit me for 3. I'm not blocking. Crypt Breaker, okay. All right, we drew the Noblest, or the mana for the Noblest, so... This is so bad if they have a removal spell this turn, but I'm not going to play it. I can't really afford to. I'm going to insta-lose, though, if they have a removal spell for the Noblest before uh, damage. And even if they don't, they still get a bunch of tokens, yeah. Good stuff. I mean, it's nice that we got it off the board, but meh, we lost a lot of our... Maybe I wasn't even supposed to attack with the helm. What is this? They probably have, like, Magister of Worth or something, or some kind of Wrath, right? I'm going to go ahead and block. I'm expecting a Wrath here. Although it could be like a Murderous Redcap. We saw that during the draft. Yeah, just a farewell. Okay, well. Hey, how is that for a top deck? Pretty good. Draven Inspector for them. Into a... Ooh, a Liesa. That's a lifelinker, right? Well, shoot. Whatever non-token creature you can... What's that? Uh, so I don't even want to attack because this thing doesn't trample, right? Yeah. If I attack, they just block with Thraben. Okay. They have a planes in their hand, and then next turn they can discard the planes to get back, like, Crypt Breaker. Okay. Yeah, it looks like we might want to bring in that Akroan War versus this opponent. Braid. A braid means I get to push in a little bit of damage, but nah. Probably just supposed to save it for Liesa. Rather bleak looking here. The more this game goes on, the more I feel like mono red might not be a very good strategy. <laughs> All right, I'll concede to the uh, Liliana now. Hmm. So, Crow and War seems like it probably comes in. 
Uh, Cursed Mirror can probably come out. Maybe Terror of the Peaks is a necessity. Uh, nah, we'll keep it like that. See if we can beat the Black White Menace. But both Kalitas and Liesa are really, really problematic, obviously. Damn it, another one lander. Mm. All right, going down to six. That is a better looking six. Let's pa or pitch the fire bolt here. I guess Krenko's command on turn two and hope. There's Crypt Breaker. Uh, I guess maybe we're supposed to just abrade that thing instead before we let them get too much value. Turn to Priest of Fell Rites. That's fine. So next turn, we get to go Koth, uptick on a land, crew the heart with Koth, and. Uh, Attack for eight? I mean, that's pretty good. Cycle Angel of the Ruins for a land, and then when it enters the battlefield, exile up to two target. So they get to priest it back? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, we just lost, I guess. Oh no, a braid. Our poor a braid, killing an artifact. Well, that's absolutely freaking brutal, isn't it? All right. What I think I'm going to learn from this is that Mono Red is not the way to go. Way too many other powerful things to do. Oh, do they just have Kalitas here too? <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I guess lesson learned. Mono Red means I'm dead. Exile up to two artifacts and or enchantments. All right. Well, at least this doesn't have lifelink. Silver linings. I mean, I guess it, it, maybe we can draw like a crow and war into goblin bombardment or something. Maybe they don't have any removal in their hand, copium. There's Lee. Of course. <laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, that ain't gonna do it. Alright, good beats. We'll scoop that up and go to the next round. Okay, here for round two of this Mardu Cube, where we went and forced Mono Red, and we got absolutely devastated by a black white. I'm gonna say lifelink, because they drew lifelink all the games, but uh, kind of maybe reanimator style deck. I don't know. This hand looks pretty good, though. We are on the play here. Let's hope, hope we can uh, maybe rattle off a couple wins before our opponent probably does some bigger and scarier things. Oh, no. Another black-white. Ooh, Heart of Kirin. Is that a better draw than play than rather than... Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do this. Bitter Blossom. Okay, they're going to hurt themselves a little bit. Hurt themselves a little bit here. Let's play the helm. Let's crew. Smash for four. Put them to 14. Then they're going to fall to 13. Confidence levels increasing. Try 
Gerard's verdict. Discards two cards, you gain one life, or you gain three life for each land discarded. No! <laughs> uh, brutal. I guess I discard the bolt and the land and hope to draw another land. That did not work out. Mm. Well, I guess we crankos here. Crew and smash for six. We can sack the helm to draw three new cards, which I think is probably fine. Oh, hey, okay. Firefish squad with the goblin tokens now. That could be a thing. Soren the Mirthless to make a 2-3 lifelink. That's not what I want to see. Okay, I have six card types in my graveyard already. That's kind of nice. So we get to go... This is another attacking creature. Yeah, okay. I guess we want to go... Ah, oh, we're just doing both of these, right? off the DRC. Actually, no. We want to leave this back as a flying blocker, don't we? So we want to crew with these two. Attack with the squad to face. Kieran to face, I think. Let's just all go face and turn the goblin token into something else. We hit a rabbit battery. No, they get to eat it for free. Well, that was one of our weaker hits. Boo. Boo, 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 boo. That damn verdict. All right, another 2 3 lifelink. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, that's another insano draw, but we'd rather have hit that off of the squad. But I guess that means we get to crew the heart with the cavalier now. They have to have some removal in their hand, of course. But not much I can do about that. Crew, go to combat. I'm expecting them to kill the squad before it gets to attack. Yeah, the Tuminous Blast. Oh my lord. They hit a Dothy Voidwalker, so now my card gets exiled instead. <laughs> oh god. Everything is awful. Okay, so they're going to actually gain four life here. Uh-oh, they are tapping way too quickly. <laughs> Noxious Gear Hulk. <laughs> All right. <laughs> they're back up to 18. I concede. <laughs> Uh, this is a valuable learning lesson. We are learning that mono red might not be what you want to be doing in this format. There are just too many other good cards, too many good removal spells. Next time, let's open Approach of the Second Sun and force some crazy fun control deck. But we will we will play it out to its conclusion. We will see if mono red can at least win a match. Okay, game two. Another one lander. Ay ay ay. Let's go to six. And that's a good enough looking six, I suppose. I mean it's not great, but hey. Can't really beggars can't be choosers. So turn two heart of Kirin, get a surveil or whatever. Delirium. Surveil, whatever, yeah. 
Uh, Krenko's command. We're going to leave that on top. Because that's going to give us the crew necessary for the Heart of Kirin. And it's also going to give us another Surveil. So that's not bad. Obviously putting a land in the graveyard. Oh! Oh, they have the Dothy, so all these cards don't even go to the graveyard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Truly living in the worst timeline here. My poor Dragon Rage Chandler never going to hit Delirium. Heraldic Banner. Okay, so it adds white, and then the creatures that are white of theirs get pumped up. Hey, that's a nice draw. Let's go, Mommy Chandra. Uh, we're going to keep the abrade. Steal. Get rid of that thing. Clearly, we don't want to lose Chandra and crew that. All right, we might actually win this game. Pretty close to dead next turn, aren't they? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Maybe like one damage off. Get a land there. All right. Let's play the bombardment. Graveyard. Crew by removing the loyalty counter so we can smash with all of them. I'm assuming they have removal here. Oh, I guess they would be dead if they didn't have removal. Another blast. All right, let's see what this blast hits first. Crypt Breaker. Okay, that Crypt Breaker resolves. We can then ping the Crypt Breaker with the Heart of Kirin. Smack in. Let's go ahead and abrade their uh, banner, because if we hit a like creature, we can hit the um, Delirium. Or an enchantment, that works too. Ooh, three, four, five, six, okay. We'll put it in the graveyard, it's extra damage. They're, we're one off of lethal, so if we get to the turn pass back to us, Chandra's lethal. All right, we won a game. Come on, let's win one more. <laughs> One more for the salvage. Okay, third game here in the second round. Ah, I don't think we can go and keep a hand like this. Let's go to six. Yeah, that's a better looking six. Actually, bombardment with uh, flame skull is kind of a combo. It's just really slow. I'm gonna pitch the noblest here. So they have the turn one Crypt Breaker. Come on, Firebolt. Darn it. Well, now the Crypt Breaker is probably just going to start popping off, huh? Maybe they have a tap land this turn and we can... No. Time for the zombies. Womp womp. Uh, okay, we'll play Magged Out instead of the Bombardment then. Discarded a Swamp to make one of those tokens. I mean, I guess if Magda gets to attack, then we can potentially Chandra next turn. They're main phasing this. That's kind of scary. Are there Madness cards? Or do they have like a Reanimate? Oh, I see. Karu, okay. Uh, we'll take two, because we would want to get the treasure here. A braid's a nice draw. Yeah, so let's attack. And actually, if I wanted to, I could instead, um, abrade the token before they can block. Oh, maybe they don't want to block? That would be surprising. I guess they want to get the value off this. No, they do. Okay. That's fine. Uh, and then let's go Chandra here, add mana, and abrade their Crypt Breaker.
Okay, Chandra takes two. Pass is good. I think we're just gonna, let's see, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we can't quite empty out our hand. Okay, so we will go ahead and play the land then and exile, see if we can cast something. Nope, Mutavolt gone for a second time. Now remember, I can crew the Heart of Kirin by removing one of Chandra's loyalties. No plays. Hey, that's nice. If they attack again, they probably have their blast again. Yeah. I think I'm just going to let the Chandra take the two then and not run into their open mana just yet. Dang it, not good. All right, land, uptick Chandra. Well, that's kind of nice. Eh, I'm expecting to have their Bituminous Blast again, which kind of sucks if they do, but what am I going to do about it, you know? If they go 3 for 3 for having the Blast... Four damage to target creature. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Better than them having the blast, I guess. And now we can start doing the bombardment with the flame skull to get some extra value. Ooh, a Felidar retreat. Uh-oh. That's kind of scary. That's a good draw with uh, bombardment. So when this dies, exile it. If you do, exile the top card of your library. Until the turn. Yeah, so we can just kind of chain those off, but let's go ahead and uptick. Definitely going to play Smugglers. Um, attack for three. Play out Krenkos. Yeah, we looking good. Smiting Helix on Chandra. Yeah, and they get to flash it back. Okay, nothing I can do about that. Gain six there, kind of brutal. Jesus. But at least they had to use both the flashback and the OG to, to get rid of my Planeswalker. So I think we're still reasonably far ahead here. We have a lot of pressure in the air. Well, that's a very good draw too. Hell yeah. I guess we'd want to do this first. Might as well loot. Because if we hit lands, it's just free roll value for the uh, Cavalier. They drew a Gonti. Uh-oh. That's kind of annoying. Well, they can't hit my Abrade since we've already used that at least. But Gonti means our Cavalier does not attack as well. We still should be in pretty good. Oh, they just hit Dragon Rage Chandler. Sure, that's fine. Okay, so let's see here. Let's crew like this. Oh, are they almost dead here? Oh, they're dead here, aren't they? Pump eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12. That's 12 damage in the air. Now we just kill off the Dragon Rage Channeler. Hit them for 12 in the air, and then, um, yeah, and then ping them for two more with the Bombardment. Hell yeah, we did it, boys and girls. We've got a match, and we can potentially get a two-in-one. Come on, let's win the last one. Okay, the third and final round, and I don't know how I keep getting these one-landers. I think we're cursed. Maybe we should just take this mirror out. Uh, go to, to six. Okay, good-looking six, actually. I am going to pitch a mountain, because not only we're on the draw, but we get to go turn two copter into turn three, crew the copter with Magda. Um, so we should immediately get a treasure, unless they have an artifact way to, or an artifact removal spell. This hand has a lot of potential. Uh, I guess the, the uber greedy play, which maybe I would do if I was on the play, is to play Magda on turn two and go for a turn three four drop, but... That seems a lot more unnecessarily risky. I guess we'll see what the opponent leads on. Yeah, we're just gonna copter on turn two. I'm too scared. I would assume it's a lot harder for them to deal with Copter than it is Magda on this next turn. Alright, nice. And we're missing land, so Magda might even be able to find, or rather the uh, Copter might even be able to find a land for us if we're lucky. We did not. Let's pitch the 5 drop. And I don't think we want to play out in the heb here. Or rather, uh, sorry, Dragon Rage Channeler here. Ooh, the Restoration of Igonjo. All right, we got a free turn. We have a free turn. So now we can crew the, co uh, crew the Copter, make a treasure, play the Koth, uptick on the land, hit him for seven, get a loot. And that might be good enough. Can we pull off a pull off a win here? Am I already counting my chickens when the opponent's at 17 life? Yeah, maybe I am. Maybe I am. There's probably a world where actually, you know what? Maybe Dragon Rage Channeler into Kranko's command, get a scry or whatever surveil into Torbrand is better for all the red permanents, you know. All right. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Chandra. Maybe that is slightly better than Koth here. I guess there's no reason to pre-combat that if we're doing the... Actually, no. It's got to be Koth, right? For sure. Because Koth can minus two and add at least two mana next turn as well. Hey, we hit. Alright, so discard in the heb. Hit him to ten. Go mountain. Dragon Rage. And look at that. Pretty darn good, I'd say. Ah, another life linker. All right, Archon of Sun's Grace. So do I have lethal next turn? Because I must be very close. Let's see. I can add six total, Torbrand, Firebolt that. This is two plus three, four, five, six, seven. We're very close. 
very close. Add two. Torbran. Firebolt, the Archon. Vortex can go in the graveyard. Well, that gives us three card types in the graveyard, actually. Oh, they're just going to scoop it up. Never mind. All right. Fair enough. Well, they were looking pretty dead anyways. Okay, okay, okay. We are one game away from salvaging a 2-1. and one. Can we do it? Same play. Cut the Curse Mirror, bring in the Akron War. Cross our fingers. Let's go. I am confident. Optimistically confident. Game two here of this Mardu cube. Ooh, yeah. I assume they're going to be on the play, but you never know. Crazier things have happened. That is not a keepable hand. Four, 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 five. No, thank you. That is a keepable hand. Pitch the mountain since we have the Magda. Looks okay. I mean, maybe this is a little bit uh, wishful thinking to keep the five drop, but I mean, we're running, what, 17 lands, so it's fine. 17 lands, we have the treasure producer. Could be worse, certainly. Uh, we didn't really get much of an idea of what the opponent's doing. They played Restoration of Igonjo plus Archon, so. I guess they're playing Enchantments, Life Gain, something. Take one! Ailey, Eternal Pilgrim. So I'm going to, so I'm going to, okay. Lifelink nonsense, or life nonsense, potentially. That could become a problem. I mean, a two mana, two, three is <laughs> already looking like a problem. Hey, there's the restoration again. So I guess it might not even be worth it to uh, equip the battery and attack since they can just bring that back next turn. Hmm. That's pretty good with bombardment. All right, let's dragon rage here. Play a land. Or sorry, yeah, play the land. Cranko surveil. Uh, we're gonna bottom that still. Or rather, graveyard that still just to get some extra card types in the yard. The old classic mono red can't beat a 2 3. Oh no, Heliod 2? Uh oh. More life gain shenanigans. So, let's see. We get to go bombardment, attack with. Yeah, let's go bombardment, surveil. Uh, I'm just going to put an artifact in our graveyard. Play the land, equip the battery to the Magda. Smash. Yes. If they block my Dragon Rage Channeler, I can sack the Magda now and turn the Dragon Rage Channeler into a 3-3. Three, three. The Magda did enough work already. We just wanted that one treasure for it. And let's go ahead and just equip. 
And now the question is, how do I beat that 3-4? <laughs> uh, maybe I don't. Oh no, Bastion of Remembrance? That's disgusting. Crap. Crap, crap, crap. Uh, we need Vortex. Oh, holy, holy moly. Three, six, that's 12 damage. Oh my god. Wow, we're really close to killing them, actually. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, six. Okay, we have lethal if they do not gain a life this turn. We have lethal next turn if they do not gain a life this turn. The bombardment with the Torbrand is insane. Okay, that's fine. Come on. Just tap out for some random creature. Each opponent sacrifices a creature if you control a Liliana. Boo. I no longer have lethal, huh? Dang it. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13. Damn. Oh, I guess they were attacking anyways. Darn it, darn it, darn it. All right. Oh, oh. Well, I can sack in response so they don't gain life here. Does that matter? If I shoot them, actually, maybe that's better. Yeah, let's go ahead and shoot their face. For th oh, no, it's only for one damage. Oh, no. I forgot. I shouldn't have... L ah, crap. I messed up. Dang it. I don't I didn't have the Torbrand on the battlefield at the time. Obviously that didn't make sense. Well shoot. Okay. Hmm. Now how do I play this? No! Wait, I don't even remember what that does. Makes an angel, and then they can, next turn, until end of turn, destroy target creature with power less than the angel's power. Okay. So they can kill Torbran. So, what do I need to draw here? Oh, definitely not that. Dang it. Well, crap. I guess now we're probably dead, eh? So had I not sacrificed that token, they would have gained one life. Then the Bastion would have triggered. They would have gained another life. But the token represented three damage later on. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, you know what? I guess they cannot actually kill Torbrand, can they? Never mind. Because we can use the Cavalier to pump up the Torbrand's power. But they can use Heliod on the Angel to gain four. Eh, no, still looking pretty bad. Oh my. Oh my. So now if they attack with the Architect, it makes a 4-4? Four four? <laughs> oh, they messed up. All right. They didn't realize I could pump with the Cavalier, so that's a, a little bit of a saving grace, I guess. Dang it, Mutavolt. Actually, we want to take the uh, equipment off. So three, six... 9, 10, 13. Yeah, I'm two damage short of killing them. Okay. 
Well, crap. Back to dead, right? So I have to shoot two creatures at the angel because it is a double striking life linker. Yeah, the restoration architect's going to make a 4-4 four, four flyer as well. Okay, so... I block here. Animate. Shoot for three. Oh, wait, did I miss lethal? Shooting the mutable at an extra damage. 3, 6, 9, 11. No, I had, oh, I had 14 damage. I was so close. Oh, I mean, I didn't even realize it. But yeah, we were one damage short of killing the opponent. Oh, now they're going to rankle and make me sack a creature too, aren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, so close. Oh, so it was that turn that I freaking sacrificed the goblin, I think, right? Oh, we might have been able to win this one. Excuse me, win this one. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, I guess they would have gained a little bit more life, but we would have been closer for sure. Okay. All right, Flame Skull. Sack the skull, ping them for three. Hit something off of the flame skull. No, that doesn't do it. Oh, if I draw bolt, do I win? If flame skull hits bolt, I think we win. Oh, come on. Come on, lightning bolt. Damn it. Yeah, lightning bolt would have won. <laughs> Oh, fire, Firebolt would have won, too. Oh, no. We actually had outs. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, Torbrand with the uh, Goblin Bombardment is pretty stupid, huh? Oh, that was funny. Okay, we'll win the next one. Game three, final round. This is for the full-on salvage. We just need to find our Vortex otherwise, because the opponent does have some life gain nonsense. But no! Another one lander. And we do have one of the ways to turn off life gain. Ah, I feel like I keep getting the same exact hands. We keep seeing the Magda, the Cavalier, even the Torbran. I mean, this hand's fine. I'm not thrilled about it, but... Need to draw the... Uh, need to draw the Smuggler's Copter again, or something. Planeswalker would be good. How about Koth or Chandra? Ah, if only. If only, if only. Oh my god, wait. I'm thinking about that last game. Did I actually miss lethal? Oh no, I did miss lethal. The ping from the Cavalier was actually 4 damage, not 2 damage, wasn't it? Oh no! I had 2 lands in my graveyard, but with Torbrand it was actually a 4 damage ping. That's what I'm overlooking! I totally missed lethal! Oh no! I had it! I'm pretty sure I had it. We sack the Mutavolt for 3 damage. We sack the Cavalier. For three damage plus four damage? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I missed lethal. Oh my gosh. Oh wait. Does Torbrand sack itself for three damage? 
Is it using last known information there, or how does that work, actually? Uh, this is pretty good. Now, now I'm second-guessing myself, but I'm pretty sure the Cavalier would have, quote-unquote, pinged them for three from the uh, bombardment, and then four for the X damage, which might have been enough. Oh. Plague Crafter, boo. Well, Torbran into, or sorry, Vortex into Torbran is a lot of damage as well, right? I'll take four now instead. It's a fast clock. No whammies, please. Oh, the angel again. So they get to shoot down my Torbran next turn. Mm -hmm. Or they don't. Because I get to bolt the angel. And smack them for four. Okay, yeah, this is working out. I mean, even if they kill the Torbrand now, this is three turn clock. Chaos for one. And there's that restoration again. Okay, they're at two life. Because on their next turn, the Vortex hits them for another four. A lot of cards will win the game here off the top. That is very close. Um, hits them for three, they double block Torbran, then they go to one. All right, so not quite lethal. So we just play the Cavalier and pass. <laughs> Vortex plus Torbran. <laughs> Just four damage to the opponent every turn, and it only deals two to me because of the wording on this. All right, we did it! Woo! I, I might have punted the second game away. I'm not quite sure how that... Again, I think it uses last known information on the bombardment with the uh, the Torbrand, so I, I might have missed lethal, but I definitely missed the interaction of the Cavalier ping dealing two more damage because of the Tor brand, so that's what I think I'm missing. But anyway, hey, salvage a two and one. Mono Red maybe has some legs to stand on, although there do seem to be more powerful strategies here on the Mardu Cube. Uh, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed. We'll probably do one more week of this because it's something new and fresh, but uh, as always, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're looking for new Capenna um, pre-orders, they're live now at cardkingdom.com slash newmot, so thanks for checking out my affiliate link there. And we'll see you back next week.